Hello everyone, I'm Yuan Peng Li from Peking University. Today I'm going to introduce AR Skill Appeals, Monitoring, Diagnosing and Detouring at the Internet Pairing Age. This is a joint work with Hengcheng Laboratory and Huawei Cloud. Uh, network faults are common in the internet. Typical causes include link congestion, fiber cut, and more. For cloud service, network faults can result in high packet loss rate, thereby degrading the quality of service. Consequently, this often diminishes user satisfaction and can potentially lead to violation of SLA, thereby causing significant loss in terms of customer reputation and revenue. From the, for cloud server provider, their primary goal is to reduce the packet loss rate as quickly as possible. To this end, there remains four key questions to answer. The first three questions provides guidance on how to circumvent faults and reduce packet loss rate. And the fourth question pertains to automating this process. Let's look into the four questions one by one. The first question is when does the fault occur and disappear? With such information, CSP can quickly re react to reduce the packet loss rate when a fault occurs and execute a swift rollback when the fault disappears. This minimizes the impact of fault on cloud service. To answer this question, CSP should monitor user traffic in real time. In this process, CSP can distinguish between victim traffic affected by network, uh, network fault and healthy traffic. CSP can deal with only victim traffic and then it further reduce the impact of the fault. Uh, the second question is where does the fault occur? From the perspective of CSPs, network fault can be classified into three categories based on where they occur. The first kind is the cloud faults that occur in the cloud AS. Since the cloud network is fully controlled, cloud faults are easiest to be detected and circumvented. The second kind is the client fault that occur in the client AS. Since client faults occur on the single path between the cloud and the client, client faults are often considered unmanageable and CSP can only request assistance from the corresponding ISP for fault resolution. Fortunately, the client fault typically has limited impact on QoS. The third kind is the middle fault that occur in the, internet, in the network between the cloud AS and the client AS. Middle fault can usually be circumvented as there are multiple paths between the cloud and the client, allowing CSP to route traffic through an alternative healthy path to circumvent the middle fault. However, circumventing middle fault is much more challenging than circumventing cloud fault because their occurrence is beyond the control of the CSPs. It is critical to localize the fault as CSP can only deal with, uh, can only deal with cloud and middle faults. Our cloud has already deployed a battle tested system for cloud fault and we're targeting at middle fault only. The third question is which is the direction of the fault? From the perspective of the SPs, network fault can be classified into outbound fault and inbound fault. Outbound fault refers to the fault occurring on the path from the cloud to the client. To deal with this fault, CSP must reroute traffic from the cloud side. On the other hand, uh, inbound fault refers to the faults occurring on the path from the client to the cloud. To deal with thi this fault, CSP must reroute traffic from the client side. Therefore, it is critical to identify the direction of the fault as CSP takes different strategies to deal with this fault. Uh, CSP can already reroute traffic to circumvent middle faults according to the answer to the above three questions. And the fourth question is that can we fully automate this process to minimize the impact of faults on cloud service? In detail, the processing is first to monitor network faults, then localize where they occur, identify their direction, and finally detour traffic accordingly. 
All existing solutions lack some steps in this process. Among them, blame it lacks fault direction, identification, and traffic detouring. Edge Fabric, Espresso, and CPR lacks fault localization and direction identification. In this work, we propose auto Ascolor Pills, the first system that automates the entire process as well as identifies fault direction. AS Color Pills leverage connectivity provided by multiple pops and a private backbone in the inter interconnecting them for executing the entire process. That is to say, it can detour the cloud traffic across different pops through private backbone to circumvent network faults. AS Color Pills had been in product deployment at Huawei Cloud for three years and protected from major accident in 2022. AS Color Pills consists of three subsystems, a monitor subsystem responsible for fault monitoring, a diagnosing subsystem responsible for fault localization and direction identification, and a detouring subsystem responsible for traffic detouring. We will then introduce each subsystem in sequence. The first subsystem, namely the monitor subsystem, uses active probing for fault monitoring as it is too expensive to maintain per connection states for large cloud. To further reduce the probing cost, AS Colopios only probs ASs with user traffic. The subsystem consists of three models, an active IP collector, the QoS monitor and the fault debug uh, and the fault reporter. The active IP collector collects active IP addresses through SMP probing. To further reduce probing cost, the collector selects representative IP addresses in each IP24 prefix. With the selected representative IP addresses, the QoS monitor monitors the quality of the cloud service. As Huawei Clouds can serve users from any pop, we need to monitor the QoS on a per pop base. Every minute, the monitor sends ICMP props to each representative IP address. Then, it computes the average packet loss rate of each AS as the per AS QoS. With the packet loss rate monitored by the QoS monitor, the fault reporter reports ASs with abnormal QoS, also called victim AS, for further diagnosis. Similarly, it also reports a uh, per pop basis. It finds ASs with a sharp increase of loss rate and regards them as victim ASs. Because different ASs point to different network paths and the condition of the internet varies over time, we set real-time AS specific threshold to identify victim ASs. We use the well-known three sigma rule to guide our setting. However, not all faults are worth reporting. We have observed that there are many transient faults that occur in the internet. This fault disappear quickly and has limited impact on our cloud service. Therefore, we aim to filter out tr and transit faults. By analyzing the distribution of fault duration, we have found that approximately two thirds of the faults last for less than three minutes. Based on this observation, the fault reporter only reports a victim AS if the fault lasts for three minutes or longer. We believe that this setting efficiently filter out transit fault without significantly sacrificing timeliness. The second subsystem is the diagnosing subsystem. It uses a decision tree with institute design to achieve accurate and fine-grade fault localization and direction identification. The subsystem consists of three models, the fake fault filter, the fault classifier, and the fault debugger. The fake fault filter is responsible for filtering out fake faults from all reported faults. We observe that the reported fault may be falsely identified due to the abnormal IP behavior. To address this issue, we classify the representative IP address of victim ASS into five categories according to this, their behavior during the fault, namely the faulty IPs, the blocked IPs, the healthy IPs, the inactive IPs, and the abnormal IPs. 
their behavior are shown on the slide. Among them, the 40 IP is characterized by an increment in the packet loss rate above the threshold after the fault occurred. We consider that a 40 IP is effective by the faults with a high probability. A blocked IP is calculated by its loss rate reaching 100% after the fault cure. We consider that with a high probability, it is added into a block list by a certain network device. And with a small probability, it is suffering from a serious network fault resulting in a loss rate of 100%. The other three categories are not affected by the fault. After the classification, the filter filters a fake fault based on the ratio of 40 IPs and blocked IPs because they are associated with the reported faults. As the 40 IP has a closer connection with the fault, we set a lower threshold for 40 IPs. After filtering out fake faults, the fault classifier further identifies fault categories by using the number of faults that reports each victim AS. There are three cases. The first case is when the victim AS is reported from only one pop. In this case, the classifier determines that the fault is a middle fault. The second case is when the victim AS is reported from all pops. In this case, the classifier identified that the fault is a client fault. This, this classification are based on the observation that for a client in the AS, for different pop, the middle paths are different, while the client path are usually similar. Therefore, a victim AS reported from one pop is incurred by middle faults with a high probability while a victim AS is reported from all pop, is incurred by client fault with a high probability. The third case includes other situations. In this case, the probability of middle fault and client fault decrease significantly. The classifier then determines this fault as an ambiguous fault. Uh, we found that it only accounts for 7% of case, and we currently ignore it. For, uh, for middle faults, the fault debugger then identify their direction. The key idea is to probe a new path from each pop, which consists of the original outbound path and the debugging inbound path. The debugging path is typically a zero fault inbound path to another pop in the Huawei cloud. To achieve this, as, no, as shown on the slide, we just let all peers in the POP2 to announce the IP prefix of the prop, props that go through the new path. When a victim AS is re reported as suffering from the middle fault, the fault debugger triggers an additional, uh, uh, triggers an additional problem on the new path. Then it compares the packet loss rate on the original path and on the new path to identify for direction. Okay, so if the packet loss rate on the new path is close to zero, it indicates an inbound fault. If their loss rate are close, it indicates an outbound fault. And if the loss rate on the debugging path is lower than the original path, but it's not close to zero, it indicates a uh, bidirectional fault. The third subsystem, uh, subsystem in the detouring <coughs> subsystem. As mentioned earlier, AS Color Pills employs different strategies to circumvent outbound and inbound faults. In this case, in, in the case of a bidirection fault, AS Color Pills circumvent it by splitting it into an outbound fault and an inbound fault. To circumvent outbound faults, the subsystem detour victim traffic from the cloud side. As shown on the slide, the detouring subsystem makes the victim traffic increase at another pop to circumvent the outbound fault. Suppose the uh, pop I, I it reports the fault. As, detouring, as the detouring is from the cloud side, we can detour only the victim traffic increase at pop I at to increasing at pop I plus one by updating BGP roads associated with 
IP prefix in the victim AS. Once the victim AS stops suffering from the fault continuously for 10 minutes, the detouring subsystem will withdraw the corresponding BGP roads so as to detour the victim traffic back. Currently, the traffic touring for outbound faults has already been fully automated. To circumvent inbound faults, the detouring subsystem detours victim traffic from the client side. As shown on the slide, the subsystem makes the traffic increase at another path to circumvent the inbound fault. As the detouring is from the client side, we must detour all traffic increasing at pop I to increasing at pop I plus one through announcing BGP roles for IP prefix of pop I at pop I plus one. Due to the large impact of the traffic detouring for inbound faults, AS color pills now only notify the network operators of inbound fault and provide an API for the traffic touring. We have fully deployed AS Clipills on a large scale in China. So far, it has been running stably for three years, diagnosing thousands of faults and circumvents more than 200 of middle faults. Moreover, AS Clipills provides Huawei Cloud for major accident in 2022. We also evaluate the performance of the three subsystem in three major pops in December 2021. For the monitor subsystem, we calculate the average packet loss rate of all representative IP in different hours. We found that the strength of the packet loss rate in each pop is similar. We also found that the packet loss rate sharply increased to the, pe to the peak at 24 24 o'clock or zero o'clock. It is possibly because ISP in our country usually updates roads and maintain network devices at this time. We also count the distribution of victim ASS occurring in different hour. We found that the victim ASS have a similar trend in each pop and are more likely to occur at zero o'clock or 24 o'clock. In addition, we find that the occurrence of victim ASS is, po uh, is positively correlated with the packet loss rate. We suggest that this is because a higher packet loss rate implies poor network quality, which means more faults and thus more victim ASS. For the diagnosing subsystem, we count the fraction of each category of faults in each pop. We found that the fraction in each pop are similar and the more than 50% of the fault and the client fault. This is possibly because the middle network in our country is well engineered and adequately provisioned, so the middle fault uh, occur less frequently. We also found that the fraction of the outbound fault is far la larger than that of the inbound fault. We suspect this is because there is much more users download traffic than user upload traffic in the middle and the client network, and thus the outbound path is more likely to be congested. For the detouring subsystem, we found that the responsible, uh, response time to all middle faults is within eight minutes. Typically, the monitoring subsystem takes three to five minutes to identify to identify and report a victim AS. The diagnosing subsystem takes three to four minutes to identify the categories and the direction. The detouring subsystem takes less than 30 seconds to execute the traffic detouring. For each middle fault, we compare the average pack loss rate of its associated victim AS before and after the cross bounding traffic detouring is executed. We found that each traffic detour reduced the packet loss rate by up to 7% on average. There are only less than 10% of the traffic detouring de de degrading the packet loss rate by less than 0.5%. This is possibly because that the middle fault has already disappeared when the traffic detour is executed. In conclusion, Auto Ask Appeals is the first system that automates the entire process of fault circumvention, as well as the first system identifying fault direction. 
It has been in production deployment at Huawei Cloud for three years and has protects Huawei Cloud from major accident in 2022. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your listening. Let's thank our speaker.